The fate of France is in Napoleon's hands at the Battle of Chateau Thierry. France must be defended and it is against a horde of coalition members. Russia and Prussia are here today facing off against the French Imperial forces as we have Mason and his emperor uh, leading the way over on this side here. The Imperial Guard and we have the Young Guard, the old and the young guard fighting side by side in today's battle. And then over here we have Marshals Ney and also Victor preparing to also attack this, uh, this town up here. So yes, we have the Battle of Chateau Thierry, which is a battle fought in 1814 uh, in this glorious NTW3 historical battle for you today. And uh, yes, there is uh, two, well, there's really just one objective, but there is sort of like two minor objectives. This two pointer here is uh, an objective for the this French in the south. The and enemy. then the uh, four pointer here in the north, which is this big town that you can see right here, is the other minor objective and then the main objective uh, which both sides must take uh, like hold like hold to win the game um is but this town back here which is uh, watching this crossing which is supposed to represent chateau thierry which is um like yeah is also historically by a river crossing so that's kind of cool but we are not uh, this is not a unique map for chateau thierry this is like netherlands 2 that we're playing on but it still works quite well actually for um sort of like the um, so historical landmarks of this battle. But yes, this is a glorious 4v4 um, that I was a part of with some subs and uh, yeah, I do love an 1814 sort of scenario. They're always really fun and uh, make for some chaotic stuff. Like France is a lot weaker um, at this point. Well, obviously it's like losing the war and uh, yeah, like the Russians and the Prussians are kind of like, you know, pretty strong at this point. And it makes for an interesting matchup. France is, you know, still like it's still dangerous. It's like a, I don't know, a wounded animal, like a wounded sort of like lion or something. It's, like, it's, it's still like, it's damaged, but it's still very deadly if you get your hand near its mouth. Um, we have some cuirassiers here. We have provisional ones. So yeah, it's kind of like a good example of that sort of like wounded animal. They're not like normal cuirassiers. They are just provisional. So they're not quite as good with like when it comes to melee attack or morale, things like that. And we have the guard uh, de honor over here. So we have um, some like young, uh, young guard. Uh, chasseurs there. Uh, I think they are, aren't they? Oh no, they're guard de honor. I think it's just their own thing. They're just guard de honor. Uh, we do have chasseurs of the young guard, um, but they're not over here. The Prussians actually bringing out cavalry, you know, trying to face uh, off against uh, the French here. I believe that the uh, two defending corps over here, we have uh, Sarkin uh, for the Russians, and then we have Blucher uh, for the uh, Prussians. And then over on this side here, we have Boulot, and we also have another Sarkin core here as well. So yeah, the Russians were present at this battle, um, and it was Sarkin in charge of the, pr uh, of the Russians. Then we have York, who was in charge of the uh, Prussians historically. But York's not here, so I'm having to use, you know, what we can. And uh, yeah, the Napoleon was in command of the uh, the French, and was, uh, uh, Ney was also here, and I imagine Mortier would have been here as well since he was in command of the Guard at that time. So yeah, we do have Mortier and we do have Ney, but Ney was actually in command of Cavalry. Uh, the cavalry wing rather than the infantry wing at this battle. There you go, the first shots of the battle as we have the young guard there. Who's arguably, I think, the best looking uniforms in the uh, in the mod. They do look goddamn gorgeous. And uh, yeah, they are getting ready. So yeah, Mason here with his young guard uh, pounding on. Mason was not here, he was actually busy, as it says, in Flanders. Uh, he was defending Flanders. Um, but he works quite well for balancing, sort of like, uh, he can't really bring like bring a lot of young guard, but he can't really bring a lot else either. He brings like some veterans and some other like weaker units. Um, but yeah, we do have the young guard chasseurs somewhere here, if uh, they can be found. Here they are. Young guard chasseurs, looking pretty cool. A very unique sort of like unit, um, because we have like old guard chasseurs as well. And they're uh, the Chevalier servants, you see them quite often, but yeah, these are a very different unit. Um, quite interesting to see the young guard has its own variant. Look at that. Poor young guard uh, infantry is getting absolutely pounded by artillery. It should. Um, it's, get, it's getting hit by the artillery back here on that hill. You might be able to see it's this, uh, this horse artillery over here. Actually, it's not horse artillery, it's just foot. But yeah, this foot artillery over here is pounding into them. It's got a nice little elevation. There's also howitzers going off somewhere. And we also got the red lances there that need to maybe move back because the uh, Prussians are getting up their infantry. Yes, if you're enjoying the NTW3 action, 
and you want to see more historical battles like this one, then do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment to show your support, guys. It really does help out the channel. And do let me know in the comments who you think is going to win. Are you Team Russia and Prussia, or are you Team France? Do you want to see Napoleon restore and, you know, defend the empire that he has created? I mean, it's not much of an empire left at this point, but, uh, you know, he's holding on to what he can. And yeah, we got uh, you can see the Russian cab there waiting sir, in the uh, in the waiting just by the uh, in the tree line. There, we're gonna have a charge here from the uh, Russians. They're gonna lose a gun. It looks like Nay's about to lose his gun here. That is not so great. And that is uh, some Imperial dragoons going in. The musketins are going in. I don't know why we have silent melee sounds, but there you go. We do, um, and that's. Uh, a success, I guess, for the Russians. It's probably a pretty cheap cab unit. It's actually managed to take out a young guard, six-pounder. So that's a big win. There is still another one back here, another young guard, six-pounder. So he's got a no another one in the bag, but still not a great start for Ney there. Um, and it looks like, yeah, we've got like flankish hisses and more trillios over here getting set up. But that is pretty much it. Uh, like, his core is pretty small that he's brought. Uh, he's gone very elite, it seems. Oh, and actually, well, I say that. The rest of his cores over here, it's a reasonable size probably actually, it's a reasonable size, but it, yeah, it looks like a lot of his trillions shifting around and he's going to uh, kind of split the two armies, try and go around, uh, which he's absolutely fine to do, um, but yeah, it's going to make for interesting uh, watch, that's for sure, and now we have the old guard marching through the forest, and they found a Russian line here, it's going to be a battle of the melee specialists here, we've got the Grognards here, the Grenadier of the guards, they can shoot just as well as they can fight and you see the Russians are going in they found uh, the guard and they're like we've got to get in there we're gonna get in and this is a bold move because like I said the guard are pretty damn good in melee so see how they can do it. and we also have uh, yeah we also have dudes going in and look at that red lining immediately from the infantry and they're gonna then get a charge and they're gonna break almost immediately that is not good to see and uh, yeah you can see the, uh, the Russian cab going in they're also arousing. I don't know why we don't have melee sounds, but we don't for some reason. We can hear a little bit, but not a lot. There you go. They are uh, fighting their way through there. And looks like they are... Looks like they're kind of getting uh, beaten back, it seems like, by the uh, Grenadiers. There you go. Should be an easy victory there, I think, for the guard. That is a, an easy start there for them. Getting up some nice kills. Managing to the Grognards here. They only lost a couple of men and they managed to rout this entire Russian front here. Over on this side, also have the uh, the young guard battling away do in their line fight. So we'll come back to that because it looks like on the other side over here. Oh, as we go underneath the world. We have Victor here. Challenging out with some uh, Prussians. He's absolutely pounded here at the moment. The Prussians and the Russians containing him quite nicely. A lot of the French units can't form square. I mean, as I hover over one that can, but yeah, a lot of them can't form square. So, uh, cavalry superiority as well, which is at the time of the uh, coalition, is uh, very much at risk. Uh, the French army is very much at risk of just being overwhelmed by cavalry, basically. No squares, little cav. Yeah, it's not great for them. And uh, you can see the hussars here battling away with Cossacks. And there you go. And there we go. For some reason, now we get the melee sound. I don't know, as the melee fight finishes and we have a floating Cossack there. Um, but yes, it does seem as though uh, it looks like the French Cav won that fight. Well, actually, I don't know if it really won that fight. They also got routed, I think. Guard to Honor over here. Look at this. Look at all of this Cav. This is going to be a real problem. We've got the Imperial uh, Dragoons still alive, which is good. And the Kirastis might be about to go in here. Or whether they do, we'll see. And... Yeah, that, this is a few squares out here, but there's not like a lot, and there's a lot of cav just operational here. That's going to be a problem for the French. It's going to have to shift all their cav in that direction. We've got Marines over here, which are like the Grenadiers of the army. Really, that's all they really have left, apart from if you're a Guardsman, of course. You have Grenadiers, but uh, yeah, the Marines there doing their bit. It looks like the Guard is now starting to appear out of the forest, and we have a bit of a melee charge over here as well from the French. They've been in some of their own Marines here. And they've broken through the, Aust uh, the, the, sorry, the Austrian line is definitely not here. The Prussian line. And now they could go for the guns here. There are like some howitzers just sat here waiting. Whether they want to go for those or whether they want to go down the line. I mean, they are tired, red morale, and they just break themselves. Just, you know, 
running forward. They probably should have fallen back uh, to use another day. And you can see that the French are on the retreat here. A lot of dead Frenchmen, a lot of dead uh, young guardsmen here. So just laying strewn across the battlefield. What a loss. What a loss. We've still got Le, we've got Le Doux over here now. So yeah, the uh, old guard uh, cavalry. These are literally just grenadiers on horseback. A very scary sight, but yeah, a very powerful cav unit that is getting mass ready there. And you can see it's going to be needed against all of that uh, coalition cavalry here. We've got, uh, looks like a lot of Russian dragoons and also Prussians or lancers and dragoons as well. And it looks like over here, I can hear more charging going on. I don't know what it is. Probably the guard, yeah? The guard that they're going in. Oh, they're fighting, yeah, they, they are in. Look at this, we have the drug guards in here. Are we routing more Russians? Keep it up, boys. Charge them. And what have we got here? We've got the Imperial Dragoons. These are also from Mortier's Corps. He's bringing them in, and it looks like they're getting ready to swing in on the Russians. And if they can do this right, they can just charge into all these Russians here, probably break them, and then smash into the side as the guard infantry also arrives. So we'll keep an eye on that. Over on this side, there's also a big offensive now taking place. You can see the French here also getting into the action. It looks like uh, we've got Prussian cavalry. Or is it Prussian or is it Russian? Uh, it's Prussian cavalry and it's routing. You can see the Prussians and the uh, Russians have sallied out of the town a little bit here. And the guard, well not the guard, the uh, victor's corps is waiting for them. He is waiting. Looks like they're having a, a bit of a melee tussle here. They need to probably start charging in. There you go. Link, uh, infantry going in. The Marines, the Marines know. Perfect unit to send in. Send in those Marines. Kill them all. Back over on this side here. Let's keep an eye on the guard as they are going in. Yes, the, uh, the Imperial Dragoons here doing their bit. The guard is just racking up the kills. They are getting shot on the flank here, the Grognards. But it's all okay. It's fine. It's all part of the plan. Here come the uh, the Muscadins, the Imperial Dragoons. And then in goes. What is this? We've got the young guard just serves. They smash into the guns here. They actually form squares to protect themselves of the, uh, the Russian infantry. And there the general's got himself entwined in this fight as well. And that could be a Russian general being lost on this flank here. And that might be the collapse of the Russian army on this uh, sort of like southern flank here and then in goes the uh, Chasseur Cheval there of the young guard going in again routing more Russians they need to get out of there really back over on this side here back onto the northern flank the French are now pushing into the town they have got the uh, coalition on the run a little bit and that's how they need to keep it keep fighting on, on in there if you want to ever get involved in any sort of NTW3 battles, whether it's a historical one or whether it's just some custom games, feel free to join my Discord. The link is down below in the description. It's the best place to go get involved in any sort of uh, battles that we do on the channel, but then get sent there. Be careful here. The French Victor shooting his own men in the back, especially if it's a Marine unit. You want to keep those guys alive. You want to blast your own troops there. And it looks like we've got the uh, Imperial Dragoons over here as well of Ney's Corps. They're fighting down here. And it's at Ladu as well. Yeah, a small little Ladu as well that Ney is also able to bring. And that smashing into the side has helped route this uh, Prussian. It might be a cuirassier. It might be a uh, Dragoon. I'm not quite sure. I think it's a cuirassier. That's gone. It's out of the game. And there's still two very elite cav units there. You can see Ney is now starting to swing around. These guys are all hidden. Yeah, they're about to swing in and uh, try and tie up the, uh, the Russians in there. And the idea is that if they uh, start to lose a battle... The Russians and the Prussians are to retreat to that one point and back to Chateau Thierry. So we'll see where they can do it. I don't know if this call will be able to. It looks like Muscadins over here are kind of cutting off their retreat. The Prussians are giving it a go, as you can see here. And it looks like we've got a, a fight with some of the Red Lancers here. Fighting off against some of those Prussians trying to deal with them. Descending on the... Uh, they sort of square they are. They nearly routed... Uh, them anyway even if they were forming square and there you go the red lancers falling back the do is being brought forward here uh, a prussian cav unit they could go maybe for my general here uh maison if they wanted to and it looks like they are kind of getting tied down by the lancers i think that's what they're trying to go for i was desperately trying to give my lancers the attack orders to attack these guys and there you go luckily the dragoons do route 
And also we had another attack here, you can see the Young Guard repelling more Cav. They've taken their ground that they need to. Still in a reasonably decent condition. The old guards are looking very good right now, looking very healthy. And the Russians and the Prussians are on the retreat now. Can they get back to their objective? We will see. And you can see the fight in the town continuing here. Going back and forth as the Russians now counter charge the French here. Route those Frenchies. The Marines are in here. I don't know if they're going to hold the red lining at the moment. They could just get shot on the side here by the uh, Prussians. When you're ready, boys, fire when ready. You've got perfect view of their back. Watch the charge, one or the other. Either one will do the job. The uh, Curassiers, the provisional Curassiers, are still alive as well. As you can see here, it looks like uh, they've got a bit of a high ground to have the uh, Russians the Russians with this road, and they can just sort of shoot down onto the French. I don't know if they outshoot the French at this stage. I know the French are pretty decent shooting. They also kind of really are, you know, melee built. Certainly these Trilliers, so they're going to be good at shooting. They're definitely, they're definitely going to be out, uh, out shooting most things down here. They are also guardsmen, so that helps with the uh, reason. But yeah, look at this. Here come Nays Coy. He's just flanking on around. He's going to try and get in behind these, uh, these guys and cut off their retreat. Let's go back to the southern front, see if anything's really going on. No, just a big old chase is taking place. Still a sizable amount of Prussians and Russians here that could cause an issue. Uh, you can see Mortier is quickly trying to chase him down. He's got his Chasseurs of the Guard here doing what he can and more Grenadiers. I don't know if the Grognards are still alive, but uh, certainly uh, he's still got uh, like the, the Chasseur Guards and also his uh, second battalion of Grenadiers, which is still going to be pretty nasty. Yeah, I don't know if he has. I think they've just been kind of left. He's got like Frankish chasseurs. I don't know if the Grognard's still alive and kicking. The action's really going on over here now. Okay, see, look at this perspective. The French is like got a blast of this, this slope to try and hit the uh, the Russians. You can just about see them. Doesn't look like it's working in their favor. And uh, looks like looks like there's capsule operation over here, which could be a problem for. French, but it looks like they're sending Victor, they're sending his cuirassiers in that direction, they're fresh, ready to go, they either go to charge, I was going to say, they don't really want to charge that skirmisher if they don't have to, looks like that's going to be a job for the infantry, and uh, it's now, it looks like there's four big ups of attack columns here, they might be about to go down this road and hit these Prussians that are assembling here, these look like Lanveril Reserve Infantry or something like that, they might be a little bit better, I feel like uh, the Prussian guards have like the weird all lapshade uh, hats. These might be guards, actually, I think, that are going in there. They have just routed the French here, the Les Dupies. Les Dupies. And also, it looks like the uh, Les Bourbon is also gone, so they got rid of a couple units there. Back on this side here, we have uh, a large amount of cavalry now appearing. Still a big, big threat here. Even though Russia's lost its, uh, its general, they've still got some decent assets here. And the French managed to capture, capture a couple of the, uh, the Prussian units. Looks like the young guys chasseurs are going in as well. They're uh, you know trying to slow down, slow down these uh, these Prussians, allow the infantry to catch up and maybe do the killing blow. There you go. They managed to route that one as well. It's very nice. Can they get any of the other ones? We'll see. Ladu is still very much intact. I mean the the big Ladu, the main Ladu. That's the one we've got to got to worry about. And then here we go. The Lancers also ready to go. These guys, if they get a good charge, can probably break a lot of stuff. And they are elites. And here we go. Looks like the uh, guard uh, Chasseur Cheval, the young guard Chasseur Cheval, going in again. Just harassing these Prussians. Not letting them get away. You can't let them get back to the town and defend it and fortify it. And here we go. That activates the Prussian Cav. As both sides are clashing now to try and sort of fight over the uh, spoils on this road. And it looks like now is the time. It looks like we're going to see uh, the um, Red Lancers go in. They're going to try and push back this fight. There is a general here. The Prussian general is open to being taken out. And here we go. A charge into these uh, Lancers of the Prussians. They're not getting a good charge. That's not going to help them. And then the general's getting stuck in there. Routed, and in comes Ledoux as well. The Grenadier Cheval. They are smashing in. 
and then uh, we have the uh, Red Lancers going back in. I think they're trying to run away from that cab and they're just trying to cause chaos as much as possible. And here come the, uh, the Ladu again, once again, just going in, just breaking everything. Actually, they've just broke friend and foe. I think those Red Lancers might not have been helped out by their own uh, co by their own allies charging now. And there you go, Ladu doing a good job. Two Russian Dragoons are still alive. They're actually, good, I think, getting committed now. And with that, it's pretty much the spine and the hope that was left in this, uh, this force on this flank here getting destroyed. There you go. All the Russian Dragoons gone. That just leaves a couple of units of Prussians on the side, I think. That's all they have left. I think the uh, Prussian general is still alive as well. And it looks like some of the Russian cavs already re-rallied. But yeah, they are uh, certainly now at a massive disadvantage on that side here. It's hard to say who's winning on this side. I think the French are gradually, street by street, battling through. Historically, this was a French victory. And it's looking like it's going to go in that way very soon as well. The Russians forming square now going to melee. I know that the um, that the Portuguese and the Chileans don't do so well in melee. This might actually go in the Russian favour. And there you go, yeah, the French break. The other one behind might do a little better. We'll see. In go the Marines. These guys need to be uh, like the, the forefront, the, spear, the spearhead of their attack. Really. They are the Grenadiers. general has fallen I think that's uh, so we lost the Russians had their general be routed but the Prussians actually lost their general on that flank there so uh, there you go both generals on that southern flank now broken still got and the general here is actually very close to the front lines if you get shot at right now by the uh, Portuguese he's trying to just stay close to his, uh, his allies the Prussians here trying to make a stand and it doesn't look like they're going to get back to the four, uh, to the one point either. It looks like they're going to be dying at this four pointer. I mean, the French have pretty much cut them off from any sort of escape. There is still a, uh, I think it's just a, a gun back here. It looks like it's, uh, I don't know what caliber. It's certainly not a howitzer. So I don't know why it's so far back. But yeah, that's uh, just you know lining up there. It looks like it's going to try and blast those chiliers as they march towards them. But yeah, really well done. I mean, Victor had a, a bit of a rough start, as did Ney losing some guns on this side here but they turned it around Victor was uh, pretty much on his own until May arrived and swung in from the flank uh, so he's kind of getting 2v1 so he did a good job to hold his ground he just had to hold and uh, yeah I wonder whether the like the coalition could have maybe used their cav a little bit more effectively a bit more aggressively I don't know so they probably had a new uh, like superiority whether they had quality as well I don't know certainly superiority though and you can see their young guy getting routed, looks like by some land there or something. But they, uh, they look like land there of the Prussians. You can see a lot of uh, French actually now routing, getting kicked out. Are the Prussians going to make a bit of a resurgence? I don't know. The French are still behind them in the 5th E Trilliers. Yeah, they have like three, six units of infantry left. That's about it. And I think we're about to see the Cuirassiers charge in. They're still fresh, still healthy. We've got... Uh, the Imperial Dragoons here as well. The 19 out of 66 of them left. They're still holding on. They could just smash into this general here if they wanted to end this whole charade. Looks like the uh, Jurassic's here also just waiting. And in they go. They're going after the general. Of all things, charge. I, mean, I guess make sure he's dead. There he goes. And then you can have the Jurassic's go in here. I think that must be the, uh, I think that's the Prussian general dead. The Russian one as well might also be dead in there as well. Or he might have got out. I think the Prussian one might have got out and the Russian one died. Not that it matters because the Russians had no one left to command them. Or well, no one left to be commanded. Yeah, these are like, I think these are guards. But they are just now routing. They're finally giving in. And some reserve musketeers are all that remain on this flank. And there you go. It looks as though Napoleon Their is going to save his empire for at least another day. I think that's the uh, the Prussian general. 
Uh, now break it or oh, dying. But yes, he looks like he's going to uh, save his empire for another day. Another battle won on French soil. How many more does he have to win before the coalition will come to the negotiating table? We will see. I've done quite a few of these 1814 battles. They've certainly been very fun. There's still quite a few to cover. Like the sheer amount of battles that are fought in 1814 in France alone is insane. Um, yeah, there's a lot. I mean, there were about five, five or six in seven days. It was insane. Like, I mean, most of them were French victories, like against Blücher. And it looks like uh, Blücher, even though he's not present historically at this battle, his core was defe defeated here again. York and Sarkin are going to be forced back towards their commander-in-chief, Blücher himself. And it looks like we're going to see the, uh, yeah, the Muscadins. They've been everywhere, these guys. They've been literally everywhere. And uh, they are going to get stopped by a square here. I don't know if this will stop them, to be honest. Uh, they are redlining, and I think we're going to just see the Trilliers maybe line up and start blasting the square. Does they have either the choice of fighting in line against the infantry, or they have the choice of stopping themselves being killed off by Cav by staying in square. Uh, the Trilliers should just blast them with like one or two times. That will probably get rid of these guys. There you go. Immediately redlining. This is how you combat a square. Like You just need to combat, like have a Cav nearby. And the infantry like that, literally as these two did, just hit it. And that's how you deal with it. And now the Muscadin is going to make sure it stays dead. And farm some kills. And there you go. That is today's battle. It certainly was an interesting one. Certainly a bit of a quicker one. The uh, French, I think, um, kind of rolled. Especially on the uh, southern side over here. Where the, um, the guard just got fought by Russians in melee. Um, and the guard got a volley off first, and is in a forest. He couldn't really tell what was going on, and I think that might have been the reason with the player as well why he would have charged them. I don't think he realized what was there. I think he just thought it was maybe regular infantry, and he actually realized he was charging in to the old guard. Um, so yeah, that is unfortunate there for the Russians. And then after that, obviously the guard could just kind of move into the town, and uh, it was pretty much over from there. Um, I did okay. I feel like I, I was just kind of like holding for a long time, just delaying the uh, holding the, the Prussians in place while the guard dealt with the Russians. Uh, and then over on the other side, like I was saying, Victor did a good job holding, and then Ney swinging in uh, to sort of cut off the retreat. Hopefully I put up the end results as well, guys, so you can have a look at those. Um, and this is from my perspective, so we can see some of my unit stats. Uh, I don't think I've got too many massive kills. 161 with my uh, Chasse Cheval of the Young Guard. Uh, they did break, but they got a lot of chevrons by the end of that. Four chevrons. And then uh, my Red Lancer getting another two. Doing an okay job there with 147 kills. And there are the rest of my kills. I'm going to have to look at those. 91 with the Marines. And everything else doing pretty average. Most of it just really shooting. Not really getting into melee. Um, but there you go, guys. That is the Battle of Chateau Thierry. If you did enjoy, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment to show your support. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any NTW3 action. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.